Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the new M3 Max MacBook Pro. This is the 16 inch version. Earlier we took a look at the 14 inch M3 Pro, but let's take a look at this. We'll check out some benchmarks, compare it as far as not just the color, but how it performs with things like Blender, as well as benchmarks and more. Now this comes in at $3,499 to start and goes up to $7,199. Let's flip this over here. And as you can see under the specs here, this is the top of the line model. So we have a 16 core CPU, 40 core GPU, 128 gigabytes of Ram and eight terabyte SSD. So this should be the very top of the line as far as that goes. Now let's go ahead and unbox this. So we'll take off the top pull tab here and the bottom, no more plastic. We haven't had that for a while. There we are. And let's flip this over and see what we've got. So let's remove the top of the box. Now this is going to replace my regular editing machine. So we'll remove the top of the box here. And here's the MacBook itself. Very heavy. I was using a 14 inch regularly as well as an M1 Ultra Mac Studio, but I wanted to switch to this one if I can and see how it compares. Now inside the box, we have our cable here. We have MagSafe to USB-C and just like the 14 inch, we have colored ends on this, this time where before these were actually white. Now they've color matched them. And then of course we have a braided cable, which is really nice in the box here. Along with this, we've got some paperwork, of course, a quick start guide, and then we've got our black stickers along with a warranty card as well. So what you would expect out of pretty much any Mac here with the black stickers that go along with the pro models. Let's set that aside and take a look at the power adapter. So this is what's included here. Let's open it up, slide it out here. If we can, there we go. And on the side, you'll see this is 140 Watts. So hopefully you can see that this is a 140 Watt adapter and you can actually charge this at a very fast speed. As long as you have a USB cable or the new Thunderbolt cables from Apple that actually allow for it. So that's pretty impressive. Let me set all of this aside and take a closer look at the MacBook. There we go. And this is in the new space black color. So let's flip it over here so we can take a closer look. And I have an M1 Max 16 inch so we can compare it. If I bring this in here, you'll see this is more of a dark space gray. So it's not really space black. I wish they would have called it maybe deep gray or something like that. But as you can see, it looks really nice, has a more fingerprint resistant coating on it. And as I leave my fingerprints on it here, you really don't see them and you can easily wipe them off unlike the MacBook air. So this is much nicer that way. And as I demonstrated that earlier, you'll see it leaves residue on the MacBook air midnight color. And if I rub the same surface on the MacBook pro, the new one it doesn't really leave anything behind. So that's really nice to see. Now, as far as the ports on the side, everything is identical there. So let's stand these up here so we can take a closer look. And you'll see we have HDMI here on the side. These are both pretty heavy. We've got Thunderbolt four as well as an SD card slot. If we spin this around here, you'll see they look identical, just different colors. We have our MagSafe port again, Thunderbolt as well as our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So physically they're identical except for the color itself. Of course you can get silver as well for the new MacBook, but just this space black color. Now let's go ahead and slide this out of the way for now and open this up. So we'll open it up. And again, this gives you an idea of what it looks like the black keyboard against the black background of the MacBook itself. Let's remove this little piece here over the display. There we are. And we'll wait for it to boot up. Now you'll see it says, hello, let's go ahead and get this set up. So we'll give it just a moment here. There we are. It's asking us to select our language. We'll click next. Now it wants us to select our region. We'll click continue and then not now for accessibility. We can set that up if we'd like. Now we'll join Wi-Fi, and that was a little odd with this screen sort of jumping back. Now it's saying data and privacy. We'll click continue. We can migrate from another Mac or Windows computer. We'll skip that for now. Now we'll sign in with our Apple ID. Once we sign in with the Apple ID, we'll agree to terms and conditions and click agree. Now we'll create a password for the Mac itself. Now we can customize this to make this our new Mac. You'll see we have location services, device analytics, and more. 
It's just bringing this over from my previous devices. Then we'll click continue. Now we'll set up touch ID. So we'll click continue and then set it up with our fingerprint here. I really wish Apple would bring face ID, but this works pretty well also. And we'll just set this up again. And there we go. We'll click continue. Now we're at the desktop, so we'll give it just a moment here, but let's go into system settings and see if we actually have a software update. And we do, we have one right away, as you can see here, and it's macOS Sonoma 14.1.1, which actually came out earlier today at the time of recording this video. So I'll get this updated and then we'll check out the wallpapers. We'll check out all the different versions. Now, before we do that, let's see what version we have pre-installed. We'll go to about this Mac and you'll see we have Sonoma 14.1 with a build number of 23B2073. So that's what was pre-installed. You'll see it's M3 Max with 128 gigabytes of RAM. So let's go ahead and close this. We'll get the Mac updated. I'll install all the software we need, and then we'll take a closer look at things like benchmarks and more. This has been updated to iOS 14.1.1. Everything's installed. And one thing I wanted to mention is that the display is now up to 600 nits of brightness with regular SDR footage. So that's up from 500 to match the new Mac Studio display or sort of new Mac studio display. And it also has the same brightness and everything else that it did before, but it's just a little bit brighter in SDR. It also has faster Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. Downloading different applications, I definitely notice the difference as far as overall download speeds. I have Wi-Fi 7 in my house and it makes a difference when I'm downloading compared to the M1 Max. Now, if we go in and take a look at some of the wallpapers here, so we'll go into settings, we'll go down to wallpaper and under wallpaper, it's got all of the different Sonoma ones you would expect or Sonoma rather. And if we go into pro black, you'll see that's the new wallpaper for this. We also have some for the iMac and more, but that's the new pro black for this particular device. So it looks pretty good, but you've got all the different options that you would expect here. Now we're all set up, ready to go. We have the M3 Pro fully specced out 14 inch MacBook, and we have the M3 Max completely specced out as well. So top of the line, both in their own respective sizes, as far as the M3 Pro and M3 Max. Now, the other thing to know is we are plugged in here on the left and Apple says that you get the same performance, whether you're plugged in or unplugged. So I thought we'd test that either way as we should get the same numbers. Additionally, I tested this earlier against the M1 Max 14 inch, so I thought we'd test the M3 Pro compared to the M3 Max. So let's go ahead and go into disk speed test here. We'll load this one first and we'll go ahead and click start. Now we have four terabytes on the left, eight on the right, and immediately we've got about 1000 faster megabytes per second write speed on the eight terabyte M3 Max. As far as the read speed, well, we're a little bit faster, around 400 megabytes per second faster on the read speed, around 5600 compared to 52 to 5300. So it just depends as it's running here, but the write speed is definitely a little bit faster on the M3 Max. And here you'll see we have Geekbench. Let's go ahead and run a CPU benchmark. Geekbench completed and we have 2,965 on the M3 Pro compared to 3,136 on the M3 Max. Multi-core is at 15,279 on the M3 Pro compared to 21,091 on the M3 Max. So some pretty big significant differences with the M3 Max. Let's go ahead and close this for now. And we'll also run a GPU benchmark. GPU benchmarks finish and we have 51,871 on the M3 Pro compared to 92,794 on the M3 Max. So pretty impressive differences there. Next, let's go into Cinebench. First, we'll run the multi-core test and see how it goes. Now, while we're running Cinebench, it's actually spun up the fans the most. So I thought we'd take a look with the thermal camera right above the screen on the M3 Max. We have about 112 degrees Fahrenheit. Over the keyboard, you can see it's at about 108 degrees Fahrenheit. On the M3 Pro, we'll take a look here. As you can see, we're at about, oh, 109 degrees over the keyboard on the M3 Pro. And 
at the screen, we're at about 108 degrees Fahrenheit. So pretty warm temperatures right over the screen and the keyboard. However, it's not too hot to touch or anything like that. Cinebench completed and on the M3 Pro we have 1,851, where we have 1,874 on the M3 Max. However, with multi-core we have 13,831 on the M3 Pro compared to 23,764 on the M3 Max. Now let's close this out and let's take a look at Final Cut Pro. I'm in Final Cut Pro with the same project. We'll go ahead and delete all the generated media files. And this is the iOS 17.1 is out video that I made some time ago. It was filmed on a Canon R5C in 8K and we're compressing it down to 4K in HEVC or H.265. So the same file is on both computers. Let's go ahead and export it. So we'll share. You can see the files ready to go at 2.88 gigabytes is the estimated size on both of them. We'll click Click next. We'll share both to documents and then we'll click save and let's hit start on the stopwatch and see how long it takes. Also, let's bring up this status bar here so we can see as well. The M3 Max was slightly faster at 8 minutes and 48 seconds compared to 9 minutes and 1 second on the M3 Pro. The footage is actually color graded, we have a title on top of it, and that's pretty fast overall for 8K footage from a Canon R5C compressing to a 4K timeline and then exporting to H.265. So in general, pretty good. Not a huge gain over the M3 Pro though. Maybe with different footage, maybe from a Sony camera or something else it would be faster. Now we're in Blender and we're actually running Blender 4.0 beta. We have ray tracing turned on on both of them and we're running off the GPU. Let's go ahead and see what it takes to render one of these scenes. This is the classroom scene. We'll go to render. I've run this before on both devices just to make sure everything is loaded. So we'll go ahead and click render and see what we get. The render completed on both and on the M3 Pro it took 5 minutes and 43 seconds, on the M3 Max it took 3 minutes and 27 seconds. So a significant time savings there. Now if we move around in this space it gives you an idea of what it looks like, so not really that great considering these are the top of the line devices. But in Blender, it's not fantastic moving around a scene here or the classroom. Now, if there's any other tests or anything you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. And we'll test out gaming maybe in a different video when we do a full review after I've used this for a while. Let me know if you'd like to see something like that. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.